What's up everybody, Greg here with lens to go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the Zcam E2 and E2C, doing a little bit of a comparison, talking about some of the differences between each of these models, as well as some of my thoughts on where I think these cameras fit in the market and who I think they're really designed for and which one you might wanna pick up if you're interested in this camera. So let's dive right into the comparison. Right off the bat, if you look at both of these cameras, they're very, very similar. They might even be a little bit hard to tell apart. They have the exact same layout on the top of the camera with the LCD screen and all of the menu navigation buttons. They have the same micro four thirds mount on the front of the camera. They also have the same mounting options all the way around with those quarter 20 threaded holes. Where the big difference is, is in the height of the two cameras. The E2, which was the original model, is slightly taller, adding about a half an inch to the height of the camera. But in all the other dimensions, it's identical to the E2C. Now with that extra height and a little more room in the camera on the E2, it adds in a couple professional features that you don't see on the E2C. The first one is adding in a CFast 2.0 card slot rather than the SD card slot on the E2C. What this allows you to do is record some of those higher resolution and higher quality codecs internally in the camera instead of having to send it out over the USB-C on the back or not recording them at all and just recording to the SD card. With the body being a little bit bigger, you also get some different powering options for the E2. You can use the Sony L-Series batteries, so you can get like the NP970s, which is gonna give you a ton of runtime instead of being stuck with the single size LPE6 batteries that you get on the E2C. And really the last external thing that's a little bit different between both of these is the E2 has a few more ports than the Zcam E2C. On the back, you get a five pin XLR mini input instead of just the eighth inch that the E2C has. You also get a component port as well as a IO port if you want to split this out and have a little more control over this camera. Other than that, these two are very, very similar on the exterior as well as on the interior and going through the menus. I did a video going over the complete menu setup, which I'll throw a link to up here if you want to go over it and really see how it is to navigate through this camera, as well as a full video diving into every single aspect of the exterior of the E2C, which again, I'll throw up here in the card if you want to check it out. Now let's dive into the camera and talk about some of the features, which is where I think that's the biggest difference between these two models. Starting with the ISO ranges on each of these cameras, the E2 allows you to go from 500 ISO all the way up to 102,400, where the E2C has a low end of 800 ISO and allows you to go up to 25,600. The other big internal difference between these is going to be the frame rates and the codecs that you can shoot in. Now the Zcam E2C has the H.265 and H.264 codec, so the 8-bit and 10-bit codec, as well as having ProRes. The only thing with the ProRes on the E2C is that you can't record internally with that. You have to send it out over the USB-C on the back into an SSD, so you're gonna have to find some way to mount that onto the camera. The Zcam E2 allows you to record ProRes internally all the way up to the highest quality, which is the 422HQ, and you can do that up to 30 frames a second in the full DCI 4K. If you want to do some higher frame rates in the 422HQ, you're going to have to switch down to a lower resolution at 1080, and then with that, you can go up to 100 frames a second in 422HQ, which is pretty awesome. If you wanted to get even higher frame rates, you can switch the codec over to the H.265, which is the same one that's in the Zcam E2C. But with the processing power and the software in the E2, it allows you to go up to 120 frames a second in full DCI 4K. You also might be seeing that you can get up to 160 frames a second in 4K on this camera. And while that's kind of true, you do get a weird crop on the vertical of your footage. While you do get the 4,000 pixels or the 3,840 pixels to consider it 4K on the horizontal, you do get a severe crop on the vertical, dropping it from about 2,100 pixels all the way down to 1,600 pixels. So you're gonna get a much narrower field of view, which might work if you're ending up cutting it like that anyway, but it is gonna make it really hard to scale up to a 16 by nine or 17 by nine aspect ratio. If you wanted to get some even higher frame rates than that, you can drop your resolution down to 1920 by 1080 or full HD in that H.265 codec, and you can get up to 240 frames a second with the E2, which is gonna be really great if you're doing any sort of high action stuff, and it's such a small camera that you can really get it in there and get some amazing looking images. So those are gonna be the main differences between these two cameras. Now, who I really think each of these cameras is for. Some of the pros of both of these cameras is that they are super small and lightweight, which makes them really great for travel. You can throw them in your bag. They also use the popular micro four thirds mount. So you have a variety of lenses that you can choose from. And those lenses are oftentimes very small as well. So it's gonna be really easy to build out a package of multiples of these cameras and have them all in one case. The other great thing is that they are video cameras first. They're not hybrid cameras. So there's no record limit. 
where with some of the hybrid cameras, you get that cutoff at 29 minutes. These cameras can continuously record to the internal memory until that fills up or the battery dies. Now looking specifically at the E2, this camera is going to be for the more professional shooters. It has some of those other inputs like XLR mini inputs, as well as having the CFast cards and being able to record those higher frame rates internally on this camera and those more robust codecs, which are gonna be really great for color grading in post-production. The downside of the E2 is that it is quite a bit more expensive than the E2C, coming in at $19.99, which is more than double the cost of the E2C, which only comes in at $7.99. The other thing with this camera is that it uses more expensive media. So there's another cost added on top of it using the CFast 2.0 cards, which do cost quite a bit more than SD cards. The other thing with those more expensive memory cards is you're gonna be recording higher data rates to those cards. So you're gonna have to deal with a lot more footage as well, which is gonna be more expensive for buying bigger, bigger and faster hard drives for your computer and the editing post process. Now jumping over to the E2C, which is definitely the budget option of these two coming in at 799, like I just mentioned. For the price of that, you can almost get three of these for a little bit more than one of the E2 but you do have those downsides of not having those higher frame rates. So if you're someone who just needs it for interviews, you wanna do multicam because it's so cheap, you can easily get a couple of these. This is a great camera for doing your standard frame rates in either 24 or 30 frames a second. I hope this video kind of broke down the differences between these two cameras. If you're interested in trying either one of these out, there's gonna be links to rent them in the description down below. So definitely go and check that out. If you have any questions about either of these cameras, make sure to let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see more comparisons like this, make sure to let me know by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel for new videos every single week, and I'll see you in the next one.